Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to do the software setup for the QNAP NAS TS664. This is also going to apply to any modern QNAP drive, including the 464 or the 264. If you want to set up any modern QNAP NAS on a Mac, then this is going to be the same kind of process. So I've already set up my QNAP NAS using six hard drive bays, two solid state NVMe drives, and a RAM upgrade up to 16 gigabytes. If you want to find out how to do that, then I'm going to leave a link to my previous tutorial video in the description. I do recommend getting the four gigabyte version because this four gig sodium is upgradable whereas the 8 gigabyte version is not anyway once we have powered this up and we have attached this to our network we need to find the nas because basically when you connect a nas onto the network you don't know what the ip address is this has been determined by your router and we don't know what the actual address of this is so to do that we need to find what's called the q finder pro that's going to scan our network and give us our ip address so that we can go ahead and set this up so in order to do this you can follow the link in the description for this specific page or you can go to the qnap download section I'll leave a link to this page in the description too. Just select your product. We want a NAS, we want a six bays. Our model is the TS664. And then we want to download a utility. We want to download QFinder Pro for Mac. So this is the QFinder Pro, and we're gonna click Global to download this DMG file here. So now once that has fully downloaded, we're gonna to go to Finder, and then we're gonna to go to Downloads, and the file is downloading here. So once the file is downloaded, we're gonna double click on the QNAP QFinder.DMG, and then we're gonna go through the install process. So just double click on this, click Continue, Continue, and then Agree, and then Install. Type in your administrator password for your Mac, and this is gonna go ahead and install onto our computer. Don't worry about background items added, just click off this. Once that's done, go ahead and press close. I'm gonna keep this. So if we go to applications now and scroll down, we're gonna find QFinder Pro here, double click, and then we're gonna minimize this. So it's saying here, do we want to consent to user information collection? Press accept or reject. Then we're gonna select our region. So we're gonna select global here because we're outside of China, press okay. Here we can close the notification window here. And now QFinder Pro has opened and not only has it located our NAS, but it's also opened up this smart installation guide. So the server has not been initialized yet. Or if you wanna go ahead and start the smart installation guide, you can press yes here or no. So now with QNAP Finder Pro, you can go ahead and manage your NAS. Just double click and you'll be kind of logged into your NAS service here. So this is going to be necessary basically every time you want to access your NAS when it restarts because the router might give your QNAP a different IP address. I'm going to use the QNAP QFinder in order to find it. So once we've located our NAS, we're going to double click on this and then we're going to go through the setup process. So here it says here we have a warranty service. If you wanted to, you can check your warranty and then make sure that you're all set up there. However, we're going to close this and then we're going to proceed with the QTS Smart Installation. So I'm going to press Start Smart Installation on my TS664. We're going to specify firmware. So I'm going to check for update and we're going to select this one. Use latest available firmware version 5.0.1, which is the latest at the time of recording and press the update button. So here the firmware is downloading. Now it's saying that it's updating firmware. Please wait. You might see the lights flash on your NAS. So you can hear that noise there. That's just the firmware installation completing. Now the system is restarting. So it's saying here, please do not close the page. The NAS will automatically be reconnected. So now when the QNAP restarts, we're gonna go through this setup process again. So now that the firmware has been installed, we can continue with the setup process. And we're gonna be using the current version of the firmware. So there's no update required because we've just done that. And then we're gonna go ahead and create the NAS username and administrator password. So you can name this NAS anything you like. Basically, you want to distinguish this from other NASs that you might have. I'm going to call this one, I'm going to call this one QNAP1. Then we're just going to set a username and a password. Press next. Here we're going to set the date and time. We'll allow it to synchronize automatically. Press next. Here you can ask it to obtain an IP address automatically, or you can use a static IP address. So just be aware that if you ever change your router or internet service provider, you need to adjust this first before you connect it to the new network. Otherwise, you're going to have a bit of a pain getting back to this menu screen. I'm going to fix this IP address. I'm going to give this an IP of 250. So this is basically the end of the IP address range. And we're going to press next here. If you don't know how to configure this, just use the DHCP IP address allocation and then press next. So now I'm going to press apply. And here it's saying initializing the system clears all drive data. So we're assuming here that the drives that you put into the NAS are completely empty and new. So that means that initializing will delete all the data on it. There's no data there anyway, so just press initialize. So this process 
will take a bit of time depending on your system hardware. I'm using six 12 terabyte drives and also two four terabyte SSDs. So it takes a bit of time. We also have 16 gigabytes of RAM as well. So saying here, starting service waiting. So you just need to wait a couple of minutes for the login screen to come back up. So we're gonna log in with the username and password that we created before. Just press the login button and you'll be logged into here. Press continue, then read the data privacy notice, press continue, that's saying loading now. And we are now in the user interface. So it's trying to give us this tour where it's saying how to download images, apps, etc. And it's detected our APC UPS. So here we're gonna view external storage settings. We're just gonna configure our UPS or uninterrupted power supply. If you wanna find out more about this, I'll leave a link to a video tutorial about UPSs and QNAPs and then close here. And now it's telling us to go through the storage and snapshots interface here. We're gonna press next, next, next. And now we're gonna start a new storage pool. And it's saying here, we have the option here to combine RAID groups and I'm gonna be enabling Q tier, which is a type of solid state drive caching, which is theoretically supposed to make caching a little bit faster when you're accessing data on the slower spinning hard drives. So I'm gonna enable this. This obviously requires that you have solid state drives installed. Press next. And here we can see the two solid state drives that I have installed, they're both four terabyte. And I'm gonna create a secure storage pool. So I'm gonna be selecting both of these solid state drives and then we're putting them into RAID 1. This is meant to be more reliable as there's redundancy even in the solid state drives in case data hasn't been written correctly to the hard drives then one solid state drive if it fails will contain that data. So press next here. So we have our solid state drives configured in that RAID group and then we'll click SATA here and then I'm going to select all of my then I select all of my 12 terabyte hard drives here. And what I want to do is select a RAID type. So there's a lot of differences between the different RAID types. RAID 0 gives us the largest capacity, but when we go to RAID 5, then we have protection against one disk failure, but also lower capacity. So for example, here I've got only 54 terabytes of space. And if I go to RAID 6, then that only gives us 43 terabytes of space. However, this is going to be a bit more secure because it means that two out of the six drives could fail before we actually lose any data. What I'm going to be doing is to select RAID 6 for today, and we're going to get only 43 terabytes of data, but that is going to be plenty for me for now at the moment. So now that's done, we'll go ahead and press next and we're going to enable over provisioning. This allows these solid state drives to run at peak speeds by not filling up past 90%. And then we're going to enable these advanced settings here by default, press next. And this is the creation of the new Q tier storage pool. We've got the two solid state drives as a RAID 1 configuration. And then we've got the RAID 6 configuration configured for the six drives here. We have a whole load of capacity, 46 terabytes. However, a lot of it is going to be consumed by the over provisioning guarantee snapshots space to allow for snapshots to be enabled and space allocated for RAID redundancy. Press create and then press OK. So at this point, all the data on your hard drives is going to be erased. So just be aware of that before you continue this process. Press OK. Let's see this might take a few minutes. So after a few minutes, it's now saying that the Q tier storage pool one has been created successfully. So it says here, Q tier will now perform data analysis and tiering automatically. So now I'm going to create a new volume so we can actually store some data on this storage space. So there's various options that we can have for volumes. Uh, what we're going to do is to use a thin volume because that is the most flexible and we're going to create it on storage pool one. So we have 34 terabytes of storage space here. I'm going to press next and we're going to create a volume. So with this particular volume, I'm going to use the pool capacity. So I want the maximum amount and we can also rename this volume as well. I'm just going to keep it at its default, press next. So I've set this to pool capacity. I set it here to 100.01%. I'm just going to reduce it slightly so we don't get this error message so that we have a tiny bit of space free. It's okay to have six gigabytes unallocated and we're going to have 37 terabytes of usable space. Press next. Here we can enable snapshots. So I'm going to allow this to create snapshots every day at 1 a.m. Press next. And this is what's happening. We're going to create data volume one, thin volume storage pool one, 37.29 terabytes and all of the default settings here. So press finish. Now it says that this volume is being created. So this is formatting. It's gonna maximize this so I can see a bit more data. So it takes a few minutes, but the data volume one volume that we just created is now ready to use. However, it's also optimizing as well. So now we are ready to mount this to our Mac. So what I'm gonna do here is to open up QFinder again. I'm gonna find our NAS here, and then I'm gonna click on network drives. 
we're going to type it in our service username and password and it's saying here the ip address of this drive is there we're going to mount this as an smb we're going to allow this to mount the folder to favorites and finder press ok here it's saying qfinder will change some settings in order to improve data transfer performance press yes type in your max username and password press ok it's saying here we're attempting to connect to the server press connect press ok here to access folders on a volume and now our folder that we created is now accessible here. So I can now go ahead and create a new folder here, call it test. And that is all working correctly. If I look at the get info, we can see that this has 40 terabyte capacity. So that's all working correctly now. So anyway, that is how you mount the network drive on QNAP. Just use the QNAP software and then we can get this to work. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.